So why does it have to be seven literal days? Why, why couldn't it be seven long periods of time over millions of years? You know, there's a lot of people who, who would like to marry the idea of evolution with creation. Their, their idea is basically this. Sure, there's a God out there, but, but maybe God used evolution to bring us all of this. If you have a Bible, let me encourage you. Open it up to Psalm chapter 33. Look with me at verse 6 and verse 9. The Bible says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. Verse 9 goes on to say, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Let me ask you, does, does that sound like a, a slow evolutionary process over millions of years? You say, why, why does it matter? Friends, it matters because we're compromising this book. You see, God told us exactly how he did it. Again, if you have a Bible, open it up to Genesis chapter 1. Look with me at verses 5, verse 8, verse 13. Over and over, we find Moses recording this phrase. He says, evening and morning were the first day. Evening and morning were the second day. Notice what he's doing here. He's actually putting a punctuation, a, a, a period of time with an evening and a morning, and then he's punctuating it by saying day one, day two, day three. That sounds a whole lot like he's defining a day. But then notice what he says here in verse 14 of chapter one. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. Do you catch that? In that one verse, we're given three elements of time. Seasons, days, and years. You know, if... A day was not a, a 24 hour day as you and I recognize it, but rather millions and millions of years. L let me ask you this. What was he talking about? Because he's already defined it as an evening and a morning. You say, well, Brad, you know, doesn't the Bible say that a day to the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day? It, it does say that actually, if you, Again, if you've got your Bible and you open it up to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Beloved, know that the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. But before I allow you to, to grab that verse and drop it into the creation account. Let's look at the context. In the context of 2 Peter He's talking to a group of people who were wondering, you know, when is he coming again? He said, look, Lord doesn't count time the way you do. A day to him is a thousand years. A thousand years is, is a day. Now, here's the reason I won't allow you to just grab that verse and plop it into the creation account. That word there he's using for a day is the same word that we find in talking about Jonah being in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. Do you really want to stretch that time out? Or, or how about this? It's the same word that's talking about Jesus being in the tomb for three nights and three days. Do you really want to stretch that out? Let me share with you one thing to keep in mind. When you're talking to somebody about the creation week, always keep in mind that the plants, all the, the flowering plants, the, the fruit yielding plants, they were created according to God's word on day three. But a lot of those plants would have needed to be pollinated. You know those little insects that drive you crazy? 
they actually serve a purpose in God's greater plan. Now, think about this for just a moment. God put all of the, the flowering plants here on day three. Do you really think it makes sense for them to, to have to wait millions of years before they could be pollinated? Friends, that's illogical. And besides the fact, it, it just doesn't work. And when you think about creation and you think about how he made us. You come away thinking, wow, this, this is incredible. The creation is incredible. And that's part of the big story. The big story that God prepared something for you and I. And oh, by the way, did you catch this? According to the Bible, there was water first and then land. That's not the way evolutionists present it. Evolutionists would say there was this cosmic explosion and finally everything cooled down and somehow we got water. So their version says land first, then water. God's version says water first, a, a water covered heavenly body. And then he brought forth land on day three. He brought forth plants that would have needed to be pollinated. Do I believe in the six day creation account? Absolutely. And one of the main reasons I believe it is because I also believe the New Testament that talks about a man named Jesus who came and he went to a cross and he's gone to make a place for you and for me. You see, I believe all of it. And I hope you do too. I hope that you'll think on these things.